Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, we're in the home stretch of my series on my interview with Ranty, formerly Ranty Flat Earth. Now, Ranty, as you know, was a very prominent flat earther who, as a result of an image from Blackpool, England, which clearly demonstrated the globe in his backyard, has returned to reality. But the big thing that we're getting from this series is an insight into the Flat Earth community. So what have we learned so far? Flat Earthers don't watch debunking videos. They don't want to see any information that's contrary to their beliefs. They only want their own opinions returned back to them in other Flat Earth videos. They hang out in echo chambers like Nathan Oakley's Flat Earth Debate Show. Now let's look a little further into what we're learning about Flat Earthers. Well, I hate to tell you this, but they strike me as a group, a small group, of very socially isolated individuals looking for, to make their mark in the world. Their family, friends, and co-workers are telling them that they're foolish to have these beliefs, and they're laughing at them. I never think that laughing at somebody is a good idea. It simply makes them dig their heels in and entrenches their beliefs even further. But are they interested in learning anything about the world around them or the universe? I don't think so. I think that they have flat earth beliefs because those flat earth beliefs meet some need in their psyche. They feel a sense of community, a sense of belonging to, a, albeit a small group, but a group. And the other thing, I think that there is a very strong attitude of contrarianism in the Flat Earth Movement. They thrive on arguing for their silly beliefs. This is one of those episodes where I'm going to let Ranty tell his story, because he has a fascinating story to tell, and he has fascinating insights into the Flat Earth community. So let's cue up the music and learn about the Flat Earthers. When I was 10 years old, I lived in Florida and I looked out at a ship at sea with a pair of uh, field glasses and I saw a bulge of water between me and the ship. You could clearly see that the water was higher than the bottom of the ship. And I immediately made that connection that that's the curve. When Apollo 17 launched from Cape Canaveral, the final moonshot, all right, I was 153 miles away in Fort Lauderdale. I could see it, but I couldn't see it for like 30 or 40 seconds after they cleared the tower because they had to get to a certain altitude before it would come over the horizon to me. And then I could see it clear as day. The, the flame off of the back of a Saturn V is as large as my 10-year-old fist held out at arm's length. And then you watch you watch that flame widen out and and then eventually disappear and you realize that the rocket has gone into the vacuum of space. You know, these are things that a 10 year old can reason through and see. Uh, that would be a pretty good video to actually put out what you just said there, actually. Oh, oh. if there was if there was um, a distance that you could go to, let's say 300 or 200 miles away from the launch pad. And you could film yourself watching it live on the telly. So you could do a live stream where you're watching the launch live on the TV. And you've also got a camera focused on the area where you would expect to see the rocket. And then it would probably take about 20 or 30 seconds or so before it actually starts to show in the camera that's pointed in that direction. Yeah, it's so got yeah, to so get high enough have to clear the horizon. So in that respect, you could watch it live and say, hey, there's the rocket. It's already at 10,000 feet. And actually, now we can actually visualize it in the other camera because it's just come on now. And you could live stream that. That would kill Flat Earth. I'd never thought of that. Well, <laughs> that would we have it. videos like that, though. And uh, Red's Rhetoric. No, you haven't got something like that. Yeah, but Red, you actually... yeah, 
But he's got he's I've got something too. very specific, and that is that he's got a launch down in Florida that launches at night until and, and you can see the flame going up and it's dark until it gets to a certain height and then all of a sudden the sun lights up the exhaust fume bloom. And, you know, you've got to get out of the shadow of the earth in order to do that. And you can do that just before dawn. And, you know, I mean, that kills the flat earth. Um, Mount Rainier killed the flat earth with the shadow going upward onto the clouds. And they came up with all sorts of excuses for that. And then they outright falsified the uh, data that they used to try and disprove it. I think the best... You know, if you want, if you wanted some advice about what could the Globers do that could try and uh, win or settle the argument against flat earthers, it wouldn't be to debate them into arguments inside of the chat. So when you see somebody making a comment, you don't go in there and say, "Well, gravity proves this" or whatever. You could just go in and you could leave a comment saying, "Check out such as such as video," um, and just keep repeating that. So every time that somebody comments on that the community as a whole just responded by saying, watch this video. Because Flat Earthers don't watch Globe Earther videos, and they never will. What you a know? pity. And that's the thing that I've noticed since I put that Conspiracy Cats video out. The Flat Earthers I've talked to in Gem Pandas, not a one of them has watched the video. But they want to argue over the image. And I'm like, have you watched the video? No, I haven't. Well, so I'm like, when well, you're done, yeah. Yeah, so I just kept saying, well, watch the video. So I'm, I'm beginning to understand that that's the problem, is that, you know, people would rather argue than watch a video. But if you, as a community, were to turn around and say, hey, watch this video, and nothing else, don't engage them in any kind of other talk other than, uh, you know, Bob the Science Guy, Mark Jacinto, watch it. You know, that's what you have to put, you know, yeah. and, and then just leave it. And then... They're not going to get any reaction then from the community. They're not going to have somebody to debate off and argue with and call names to. So then the only thing they're getting is just information about where to go to actually, you know. So are you saying what, that they don't want the information, they just want the attention? I think so. I think if you look at the um, look at the what's happened recently with me, at least, you would have to say that I'm pretty well known in the community. And yeah. that um, when You're I thought... You're pretty well known I, in both communities, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And I you come know. out as a globe earther, and this is the reasons why. I expected probably a good 20% of the flat earthers to go over and watch the video, right? At least see the reasons why I left the community. What's, what's transpired is that I haven't found a single flat earther that's gone and watched the video. It's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So much for truth seeking. I think you mm. may be onto something. They're not interested in the truth. They're interested in arguing and be contrarian and getting attention. And I'm wondering if that's, you know, what we're doing by putting out the actual information is feeding them. That's the one side of me. And that's, you know, I, I actually adopted some practices on my channel for that. And that is that I rarely uh, bring a lot of attention to a particular flat earth video. I don't, I, d I generally don't highlight a particular video uh, because the Globers will go over and look at it. The Flat Earthers have already seen it. <laughs> and, the, and the person that ends up benefiting from that is the idiot that created it. But the people that I make videos for are not the Globers and not the Flat Earthers. So the people that are actually out looking for information that don't know and, are, and haven't thrown their lot in one way or the other. You know, maybe there's somebody that didn't take a lot of science in high school. You know, they weren't they weren't geared that way. There's a lot of people that that don't go into fields that don't use an awful lot of science. And that's fine, you know. It's kind of like expecting a theater major to actually discuss physics. It's just it's not their thing. But I wanted to put out some information that these people could actually look at and get honest information as opposed to listening to the propaganda and the, and the uh, misleading citations that are being put out on the other. Somebody's got to counter that. Well, the thing is, flat earthers aren't going to see your videos because they're not going to go and to watch it. I was never one that watched your videos, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. Even though even though I should do, you've got, you've got science in your name, you've got video you come across very professionally i should have been watching them i should have been um 
you know, going over there and at least uh, taking it in. But I didn't. You know, one of the things that I learned when I was in training, uh, you know, when I was an officer training, they said, always get yourself a subscription to Soldier of Fortune. And we kind of looked at the guy and said, what would we want to read Soldier of Fortune for? And he says, well, you need to know what you need to know what your guys are reading. So at least you have something to talk about, you know, it may not be of interest to you, but you at least need to know what they're doing on the other side. You know, or or you you know you're going to miss references. You're going to miss things that they'll understand that you won't. You know, like this Doctor Peel stuff. I have no idea what's going on with that. Do you have any clue on it? With, with no, his inflatable banana in his backyard. I have no idea. I'm going to have a look for that when when we finish this stream. I'll it's all over the place, man. Well, I actually it, know what it's up with that. If I may interject here, please, because I've been trying uh, to figure it out for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was confused at first too. Then I watched the the Simon Dan video. It was on something. The the what's his name? Matt Powell is that a thing? Yeah, Matt. Powell. He's a guy, right? Yeah, exactly. And he said something extremely stupid. And Simon Dan said, um, "It works like that. If you repeat a lie often enough, uh, more people believe it." And then he said, "I have heard that he has a big inflatable banana in his back. He calls Doctor Peel, and that's the lie that." If you ah! repeat it often enough, everyone believes. <laughs> oh, you know, if you're going to make a lie, just, you know, if you're going to lie, lie big. And if you lie, yeah, big, exactly. lie exactly. a lot, exactly. you know, and do it all the time. And then people start believing it's true. That, that, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like the first law of propaganda. I gotcha. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, it's been an hour. I, I want to thank everybody uh, for stopping by. And Ranty, thank you very much for chatting with me. It looks like we do have a couple of people in the chat right now. Uh, you, you mind taking just a couple of minutes and maybe uh, hearing any follow up questions from them? And then we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and shut this bad boy down. Sure. I just want to make one comment, though. I think this is something that I've <clears throat> not spoken about since um since switch inside and uh, that would be that when you're inside the flat earth community you are assuming that uh, because you're getting the information from other flat earthers so that's all you're in contact with and you kind of end up shutting yourself away from other people's opinions so then when you're inside the community your community becomes your world and your world is very small and you're all repeating the same things and you're watching each other's videos and you're discussing it between yourselves about how you can answer, you know, some kind of question about gravity. And you have no idea when you, when you, when you people say to you, the rest of the world is laughing at flat earthers. Flat earthers think uh, this is just a conspiracy because they know we are right. And they aren't really laughing at us. They're scared of us because we have the truth. And that's how you feel inside the community. When I've stepped out of the community and I look back at it now, and and uh, I know I've only ever for the last two weeks been talking about this publicly, but I've still been since I first saw this image back in uh, February, been considering the idea that the Earth's now well. And looking back and looking, be able to look at inside at how the the community is now from the outside, I can I can absolutely uh, appreciate that the whole world is laughing at flat earthers, and that's. You know, to, to know that I was inside that community and one of the the more popular people inside that community, it's um, it's it's very revealing to me to see that. And and uh, but I'm just trying to let you know that when when you're arguing with flat earthers, they all think that you are um, that you're lying to them, and that you're not really laughing at them. You're scared of them, and that they have the truth. Well, the so, honest to God truth is that the flat Earth is basically the pet rock. Of YouTube, the only difference between a pet rock and flat Earth is uh, some people actually take flat Earth seriously. You know, I I I am remiss here in uh, my super chats. Earth is life. Asked you or uh, asked a few minutes ago. I don't know if you happen to see the super chat, but it's actually a very insightful one, and that is that Ranty. It's directed to you. Now that you have seen the evidence of that Blackpool photograph and you're starting to see evidence of the globe again is the rest of it just falling into place 
our flight paths falling into place, our weather patterns falling into place? Are they starting to all make sense? Yeah, well, my standard of proof was um, was what I needed. So my standard of proof was just show me curvature local to where I am. So I, I wasn't asking for much. And this image was, was basically what I've been crying out for for years for me to determine that the Earth is a globe. Once you appreciate that the Earth is a globe, everything else just naturally follows. So when people in the community would be talking about the ISS and are they in the ISS or are they swimming underwater with these fake bubbles and uh, you know harnesses and all this kind of stuff, does that really matter once you know that the Earth's a globe? Because it's a moot point. If you can see curvature local to you and you know that there's drop, you know that that is below that place, and so it must be a globe. Once you know that, you've got gravity, right? You've mm -hmm. got gravity. Everything else. You do. So the idea, whether or not somebody's in the ISS, is irrelevant to the argument. Although inside the community, the ISS and the moon landings are a very big thing, right? But mm -hmm. you, you can address that situation once you've determined that there's drop in your area. So my, my answer to that would be then as soon as I saw this image and it showed that it that there was drop, everything else was just very easy to just put into place. I could then dismiss everything else based upon that one fact because the whole flat earth idea revolves around the earth being flat. <laughs> right? That's what and then the rest of the flat earth. And the rest of the conspiracies that go alongside of that, you know, the moon landings, the ISS, you know, gravity, all that kind of stuff, then that all fades away into, into irrelevancy because you've got drop. You've got drop because you're on a globe. So the rest of it is, is, you, is pointless. So for me, it was very easy. The, the, the high standard for me was show me local curvature. And then everything else was just easy just to put back in its place. Because once you understand that, if you if you are living in I don't know, let's say London, and you ever you know you, you might not get the opportunity to see something local to you that could provide drop. So there might be people that live there that are flat earthers that won't have the same um, ability to just go a few few miles and, and see what I could see. Uh, but if they could, and then they saw it and they saw this drop, then they wouldn't be a flat earther for very long because everything else then just falls into place and the rest of that conspiracy side of things becomes a moot point. Mm -hmm. So search for your, so my, my, my call out to flat earthers would be go to a location where you've got three, you, you can stand on land, look at a landmass in the foreground and look at a landmass behind it, probably like some kind of mountain and know the buildings, know the elevations, know the mountain ranges and do your own calculations. And if you can determine that it's dropping your location, then the rest of every, uh, all those other questions, all those other conspiracies just go away. Well, I don't know about you, but I found that to be a very insightful look into the world of the flat earther. Socially and intellectually isolated to their own small group, mocked by people around them, not interested in finding any new information that would be contrary to their narrative. But more importantly, they thrive on argument. You know, basically, I think these are people that are desperately seeking a hill to die on. And as much as we try and counter their arguments, they thrive on that. You know, as astronaut Chris Hatfield once said, arguing with flat earthers is like mud wrestling with a pig. You just get dirty and the pig seems to enjoy it. And I think that that is a very key element to the flat earth. They, they enjoy mud wrestling with people that know more about a subject than they do. But by mud wrestling with them and playing little logical fallacy and word games with them, they somehow think that they're smart. So in our next episode, I'm going to step back and reveal the panel. Now, during this entire interview, there was a live panel in Discord. Ranty, of course, was aware of that. And during the entire interview, they really were listening and paying attention, but not interrupting. We did have one pop in briefly during the last episode and talk about Dr. Peel, and I appreciate that. But now, in the next episode, I'm going to turn the questions over to the panel. 
Ranty is going to interact directly with my group and I'll just kind of moderate a little bit. So I think it'll be an interesting experience. So I'll see you then. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe down in the corner and take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye, the science guy.